learn how to create, sustain, and scale up your print-on-demand business with the latest tips, guides, and strategies to help you start selling and making money today. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, and here's your host, Adam Schneider. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is episode 16 of the Sales on Demand Show. Don't forget, you can find it online, salesondemandshow.com. Also on iTunes and uh, various other platforms. I have completely forgotten how many different platforms the podcast is going to. It's going to a bunch. I know it's going to Spotify. I know it's going to the Google uh, whatever thing. I don't use Android phones, so I don't know what you guys have for podcasts. I'm an iTunes guy, and that works for me, but... I'm uh, 99.9% sure that you can find this podcast if you just do a search Sales on Demand Show or Print on Demand Podcast, you will find it. And if you're listening to it, you don't even need to do it because you're already listening. Isn't that silly of me to even say that? All right. So, hey, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I got some things I always have far more that to talk about then I have time. So of course today I picked uh, a topic that I think is going to be of tremendous relevance to you. Um, I'm going to talk about three things that newbies and old bees do that destroy their chances of success in any business venture. A- and I have seen this. People will start, they'll they'll get excited about doing something like this They'll get working, they'll have, you know, initial burst of success, an initial burst of uh, activity where they're motivated and they're driven and they're like learning and and getting better at things. And then they kind of die out. And uh, I often wonder to myself, like, what is it that makes someone do that? Like, let's be honest, I mean... You've probably started things that you didn't finish, right? I mean, I'm sure you have, if you're an artist, you probably have seven or eight or seven or eight hundred different uh, art projects sitting in a drawer somewhere. If you're a writer, you probably have a bunch of books sitting somewhere that you are half working on. That's kind of me. I was, and maybe am, still a writer. My, um, I don't know how good I am at writing, but I sure, I like it. I just don't have a lot of time for it. So I've had to put things aside to make room for the things that are important to me right here and right now. We all do it. It's called time preference, right? We have limited amounts of time, and we got to sleep, we got to eat, we got to somehow earn enough money to stave off the demons of starvation and homelessness. So doing a business like this, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. And sometimes you make a decision to say, I'm putting this aside in favor of this. So we're going to talk about three things that newbies do that destroy their chances of success. So first of all, I'll uh, report some interesting news uh, about the course that I'm creating. So I have been conducting tests and I've got a few more videos in the pipeline, so to speak. And I'm preparing for Mother's Day, and I've been running tests for Mother's Day. And i got to say, the results of the tests are very interesting. And I'm ready to send products into Amazon in preparation for Mother's Day. And I'm going to be using some special sort of high-level ranking techniques to kind of get those products um, on page one or page two for some high-level keywords. And... The only way for you to see the results of that is going to be to join me in the course. So that's, I mean, that is what it is, right? You know, I talk about some basic beginning stuff here on the podcast, and I give give as much free content as I can possibly manage. But there are just some things that are just really high-level stuff. And, uh, I mean, you can't give everything away, right? So um, in my personal life, not that... You know, all of you are sitting there wondering, man, what does Adam do when he's not on the podcast episode? Well, I had a great time this weekend with my family. 
And by great time, I mean that my family was great. Uh, we visited um, a city that's a little further away, a couple hours away, and uh, stayed there overnight. So we stayed in a hotel, and I don't know why uh, this hotel was everybody's pick, but it was sort of this, hey, let's stay in this hotel. Uh, it's cheap hotel. It's kind of low, er, central. You know, let's all just stay at this hotel. So I, I looked at it, and I was like, man, it looks looks more like a motel to me. But, you know, I'm like, all right, fine. What's the worst that could happen? I mean, it has a nice pool. I mean, my son, he loves the pool. He just loves it. He would live in water if he could. He's like a fish. But, uh, I mean, it had a nice exterior. But, man, there were some idiots staying at this hotel. So at about between 1.30 and 4.30 in the morning, uh, I was constantly opening the door and just yelling at people who were just running around, like hammering on doors. And, I mean, overall, it was just a very irritating experience. So it definitely did not put me in a in a good mood, but it was great to see my family. I love them very much. And you know what, guys? Sometimes you got to take you got to separate yourself from your business and you got to go spend time with people because it's very easy when you're doing stuff like this to just lock yourself in your in your room in your office and just, you know, zone out doing whatever it is that you're doing. And you forget that there's human beings out there and that the whole point of life is not to earn a bunch of money, but it's to to have the best possible relationship with the people that you love and care about that you possibly can. And also to sit down with your family and talk about business. So um, this is kind of funny. Every time I get together with my family, uh, I end up talking about the business that I'm running and I don't come into it with the intent to do that. Uh, this isn't a multi-level marketing thing. Uh, I don't have to tell any single person anything about the business. I love that. That's one of the things I love most about doing this is the complete anonymity I have as a business owner. I am globally selling. I I'm literally selling to people in Iceland, Germany, uh, Oslo, Norway, uh, just Canada, of course, uh, but they don't, you know, they don't know me, and uh, that's one of the things that I just absolutely love about this type of selling is that you don't have to tell your friends about it and then recruit people and then have them recruit people and then it turns out to be this irritating thing where you know seven of you are trying to sell to the same twenty-one people. It's just annoying. So, the th I get talking about this all the time with my family. And I told my brothers, I said, yeah, I've got a podcast. And they were quite surprised to hear that. And I was like, you should have a listen. And my brother was like, yeah, I've been looking for a side hustle. So shout out to my bros if you're listening. Peace, man. It's good to see you guys. So if you're not, well, uh, hopefully all the rest of you guys are doing well. And let's move on here. So, hey, we're going to talk about... Three things that newbies and old bees do that destroy their chances of success. And I mean destroy, guys. I don't mean things that hold you back. I mean things that absolutely annihilate your, your mental motivation, your mental state of mind, and stop you from becoming successful. So the first thing I want to talk about is something you may have heard this before, you may not have. It's called imposter syndrome. And it's very common. And I'll actually share a tiny little tidbit from something that I saw of my family doing. So, my one of my brothers is is terrifyingly talented at uh, computer design. Um, he is more talented than any living human that I am aware of, and I'm not even I'm not exaggerating one bit. Uh, he's been getting into this uh, uh, digital design where you create 3D images. So he printed out and gave my grandfather for his birthday one of these 3D images that he created. And I looked at it and I thought, this can't, this can't be a 3D image. It looked like uh, an espresso coffee maker. 
with a couple of cups of coffee beneath it, and every detail was just as vividly lifelike as as if it were a professional studio photo, and not one single element of the image was real, and I could not believe what I was looking at, and like we were all staring at this, and I'm like, why aren't you working for Pixar or something like that, and and he's like, well, I don't know. I mean, I need to get a little bit better. And I'm like, are you, are, what? <laughs> so I just, uh, I mean, he's a very humble kind of guy. He's extremely talented. But sometimes his humility holds him back. And I, I've never said that about anybody in my life before. Usually, people are not too humble, um, but sometimes people are too humble and they fail to take action because they don't believe that they're good enough to succeed in something. And when someone tells them, oh man, like you're, you're extremely talented, they're like, well, I'm not as talented as Picasso. Or, or they make some comparison to someone that they, they might admire and be like, oh, I'm not as talented as that guy. And they, they don't know or they forget or they ignore the fact that there are other less talented people making, you know, either a good living or tons of money doing the the thing that they're doing who are less talented. And uh, it's called imposter syndrome, and it makes you feel like you're not worthy of the efforts and the success that you're having. Or the lack of success, if you're not seeing success, you think, well, that's just normal. And it it is absolutely a success killer. It is probably the number one thing that kills people's mindsets is because they don't know how valuable their own skills are and they undervalue those skills. So for example, I, you know, I know people who are, you know, writing books or they're, they're really good at public speaking. And I say, Hey, uh, have you ever thought about, you know, doing this professionally? And they're like, Oh no, I, I couldn't do that. I'm like, why? Why not? I mean, I'm the kind of guy that even if I have like a tiny bit of talent in something, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And I'm not by any great shakes very talented, okay? Now, if you think uh, maybe I have some public speaking talent, maybe not, I don't know. I'll leave you guys to determine that uh, for yourselves. I'd like to think that maybe I do. However... I'm not as good as probably thousands of other public speakers out there. But you know what? I'm okay with that because I'm constantly improving my abilities through practice and through learning. And that is, I'm pushing back against imposter syndrome. You know, it was imposter syndrome that told me that I can't run, that I can't teach a course doing this because I'm not successful enough to share valuable information with people. And then I keep telling people, oh, yeah, I make this much money. And they're like, what? what? They're like, that's, a, that's really good. And I'm like, well, it's not as good as it could be. And they're like, well, it's still pretty good. And you're constantly improving. So, you know, go for it. Like, jump in there. Get in there. So, yeah, obviously you can see that I am. I'm fighting against this. But this is very prevalent in this type of thing. People are constantly doubting themselves and they they think oh I can't make it and uh, here's a couple of ways that imposter syndrome sort of appears or blooms in people uh, when they first look at the 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 technical things that you need to do to sell print on demand they think to themselves and they say to themselves I can't learn this I'm not technical I can't learn this and to that I have one thing to tell you that's crap all right, there is an 80-year-old lady, 81, and she is a huge gamer, and she plays a game that I'm familiar with called Skyrim, and she's very good at it, and uh, so good, in fact, that they are putting her image, they're putting her as a character into the next, into the sequel of Skyrim. Now, if you're not a gamer, you're like probably thinking, what the heck is Skyrim? Well, anyway, I'm just making a point that even people who have no, I mean, 
someone who's 80 years old, uh, the internet has only been around for probably one quarter of their life. And so for someone like that, like getting connected to technology is a lot harder because you didn't grow up with it and you're accustomed to a certain way of doing things. But 80-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 11-year-olds. There is no limit to what you can do if you sit down and you work through the details. It might take you longer, but you're going to make it through if you just persist. There is nothing, I'm firmly convinced that there is absolutely nothing that a person cannot learn if they're determined to learn it. Now, maybe this isn't interesting for you. Maybe you're 65 years old and you're starting this and you're like, man, like this is way beyond my level of experience. You know, I know how to text on a phone and that's about it. Well, take it slow. There is no rush here, right? I mean, somebody who's 65, you you already know better than most young people that there is only one destination for a human being. And uh, that is that someday you're going to die. And there's no rush to do anything. And, and don't let other people rush you into it by, you know, by you looking at what they're doing and seeing their success and thinking that you somehow are are stupid or not good enough because you're not succeeding as quick as they are. That's one thing that I have to work on. I look at other people's success. You know, maybe someone's only been doing this for a year and they're just killing it on some platform like Etsy or Amazon. And I'm like, well, it's taken me two years to reach this point. So, I mean, why am I so stupid? But... Everybody develops at a, a different rate. I mean, we should all know that by now. We've seen enough Reading Rainbow and all these little kid shows on TV. Like, come on, take the lesson, learn it. All right, so the second thing that newbies and old bees do that will destroy their chances of success in pretty much any business is uh, they fail to push themselves and they become comfortable. And I don't think that this is necessarily a terrible thing, but it is definitely something that I don't do. And so when I identify other people who are just comfortable and they're not willing to push themselves, I can already I can see that they're not going to be winners. And you know what? Maybe they're making a little bit of money. Maybe they're making you know thirty, fifty bucks, uh, but. Eventually, someone like that is just going to kind of give up on it and close their store, close their Amazon account, just sort of walk away from it all. Because unless you're willing to make sustained, consistent effort, and I don't mean the number of hours that you work, I mean the priorities that you set in your life. I don't spend a significant amount of time working on my business. You might think I do, and... You know, sometimes I have weekends where I spend a full day and a half doing stuff in between doing other things that have nothing to do with the business. But honestly, I don't spend anywhere near as much time as you might think. I would say in a week, I would say five to ten hours is the amount of actual time that I'm spending sitting and actually working on the business. I, I almost spend as much time working on the podcast and building the course as I do working on the business. I mean, basically during the week, I do nothing. You know, if somebody messages me on a platform, I'll respond. I'll send out, you know, any orders that uh, aren't integrated. And I'll just do the very bare minimum to get by. But it's only on the weekends that I actually have time to sit down and really work on things. And so... One of the struggles has been to push myself to, to breach new boundaries. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to be trying here over the Mother's Day season is I'm going to be using Facebook ads to start ranking some of my Mother's Day products. And this is a very high level thing to do. It's definitely not a newbie thing. It's not even necessary, guys. You can... You can sell for however many years Amazon exists. I don't know how long Amazon will, will exist, but you can go 
your entire life and never use Facebook ads to rank your products. But I like to try things that are hard and I like to try things that other people aren't doing because those are the things that give you an edge in this business. And I want to make stacks of money because I have a lifestyle that I want to pursue. Not, not that I want to be, you know, driving a nice car, but I would like to pass on a business to my kids. I would like to do a bunch of things, travel, do stuff like that. And the only way to do that is to overtake my competition. And so that's why I'm doing that. So that, if you missed that, that is failing to push yourself beyond your current limits, okay? Now, maybe you're doing this slowly, but you should be doing it bit by bit. So instead of running away from new information, you know, dive in there and learn something that you didn't know. So if you've never heard about how to do Facebook ads, I'm going to be, it's going to be part of the course. I'm going to be showing you guys. I already know how to do it. It's just that I've never done it for print on demand. In fact, I don't actually know of anybody that's using Facebook ads to rank a print on demand product. I don't think it's very common. And there's a certain way that you have to do it in order to make it successful. And it's going to have to involve an email list. And a lot of people get scared when they hear the words email list because email lists are kind of high level stuff. And, you know, print on demand people just don't want to do emails, right? That sounds like work. And, you know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to have to talk to people, write emails to, to a group of people. What are we going to say? So I'm going to be working through that, guys, and I'm going to be giving you a framework in this course on how to build an email list and, you know, build and rank your products using your email list. Because why not, right? No one else is doing it. I might as well kind of figure out how to do it. So, number three, and uh, this you're not going to be surprised when you hear this, but, you know, people fall apart when things get hard and this is probably more for newbies than old bees uh definitely the failing to push yourself is is a broad thing that applies to people who have been doing this for a long time and people who are new at it but uh generally speaking uh the people who bail out of this in the beginning they bail out because it's hard and i don't mean that you know it's actually that hard because when I look at everything that I'm doing here it's not actually that difficult I know what I'm doing I click this button do that do that do that do that I know the screens they're all familiar but when you're new all of that is very overwhelming and new people you know you you'll see like 30 videos on a course that you're taking or something and you're like man I don't even know where to begin. And and then you're constantly thinking, well, what do I do when this happens? Or what if this happens? What if the product gets lost in the mail and the customer sends, you know, an angry email to me? What do I do? So that's that's when people fall apart and they just they just forget that the information is out there to solve every problem. In fact, I'm part of a course and a Facebook group called the low hanging system and I'm constantly seeing people asking the most basic questions things that you know are part of the course and that are very easy to solve if you just watch the video on what to do but they panic and they forget to to just go back to the infra, the, to the training and they 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 they're asking this panic question like what's going on how come my product isn't being uploaded how come this isn't working and all of us who have been doing this for a while, we're like, hey, relax. Things go wrong sometimes. You know, for example, um, uh, Gearbubble and Amazon, the integration, uh, had a couple days where it wasn't working. So orders from one site weren't getting pulled in to Gearbubble, and people were panicking and don't know what to do. Well, if something doesn't work, you find a way around it. So if the integration that you have isn't working, 
you manually enter your orders and then when they're ready to ship you mark them as shipped it's very easy but people get overwhelmed when something goes wrong or they get angry they get angry and they say oh this this site sucks they're like oh man how come it takes 10 days during christmas to to make a t-shirt or a coffee mug and and i'm thinking 10 days man that's that's pretty good i mean do you know what kind of volume some of these print on demand sites are doing during christmas um just in case you don't know already uh custom happy which is the uh, warehouse that prints all of my coffee mugs or 99 percent of them um they do uh what did they do they did they had one day where they did no they had a month where they did fifty eight thousand orders in one month and that was up over 65 percent from the year before so the year before in 2017 they did sixteen thousand orders 16,000 coffee mugs that they printed and shipped and in the same month one year later they did 58,000 well just think about how much more it's going to be this year and yet they were still sending out orders within you know three to five maybe as much as six days and only right before Christmas did it get to more like eight days and people were still just just throwing a fit. And I had to go on Facebook and just tell some people to just cool it. Because they were just all caps, angry, blah, blah, blah. Sent, you know, entering angry messages. Oh, this site sucks. It's all a scam. It's this, it's that. See, those are the people that just, they can't handle when things get hard. And they, they fall apart. So, I understand um, things do go wrong. You're going to get an angry message from a customer. You are. I mean, it's just inevitable. I had a customer who, I don't know what happened. I had a customized product and I shipped it to her and she claimed that I did something wrong and the post office where she lives threw the item out. And I was like, well, that's annoying. And she blamed me for it. And I'm like, Hey, listen, I didn't do anything. And at first, I got defensive about it. And I and I was like, oh, I'm not sending you another one. You're just an idiot. You, you did something stupid. And I didn't say that, but I was like, well, I've fulfilled my obligation. What do you, what do you want me to send you, like, 20 of these things? And then one of them make, make it through? So, of course, she leaves a negative review. And I was like, oh, great. But you know what I should have done? Just resend it. You know what? It would have cost... Yeah, it cost me. I ended up resending the item. And I ended up sending it priority mail at my own cost. And it arrived one day after Christmas. And she still sent me an angry message on Christmas Day. She's like, you've ruined my Christmas. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, lady, I can't even. I can't even handle you right now. So I had to put my phone aside and just not worry about it. And you know what? You're going to get that. You are going to get that. If you want to be successful in this business, you are going to encounter people who are just completely unreasonable, like beyond unreasonable. Like you want to throw them off the side of a cliff unreasonable. But you know what? You have to learn to deal with that. And um, the only way to really learn how to deal with it is to just, just keep working to manage those customer expectations. So I do talk about managing customer expectations customer expectations if you look back it's probably one of the very first few episodes that i did and i talk about managing you know your customer expectations because print on demand is not instant right i'm sure there are people that think that i have a giant warehouse filled with already printed coffee mugs but i don't i don't have any coffee mugs in my possession whatsoever they get printed when you, they order and if the warehouse is busy, it takes a little longer. So, yeah. So falling apart when things get hard is definitely one of those things that destroy the, the, the mental ability of somebody to manage their business. So here are some ways 
to overcome that. Number one is manage your own expectations. Do not, okay, this is one of the problems that I have with um, e-commerce is that people who get into e-commerce are being sort of deceived and uh, they come across these gurus. And if you don't know what a guru is, it's somebody who is uh, trying to sell training and they're, they're trying to hype the training up. So they're, they're trying to get new people to come into e-commerce, which is selling online. And they're, they're trying to sell them on this because they're, they're, like, they're saying things like, this is the laptop lifestyle, passive income, just click button, get profit. And you know what? I am not that kind of person. I can't stand that because it sets expectations for people that are just not realistic. And, you know, to a, to a degree, e-commerce is probably the easiest thing that you can do to earn money, but it's also the hardest thing you can do because, you know, there is nobody out there, you know, waiting to send you money. You have to create the value and sell it. Now, Amazon, Etsy, all these platforms are fantastic, and I'm grateful that they exist. But, I mean, there are hundreds and thousands of people selling on those platforms already and they will eat your lunch if you uh, fall apart and and fail to under you know set your expectations where they should be you know when you expect instant success when you get frustrated about hijackers when you get frustrated about copycats when you get a takedown notice and you're like well this sucks i'm out that is what i'm talking about your expectations have everything to do with it and the world is not going to hand you anything, okay? Yeah, get that now? So, I think I've pounded that into your head enough. Hopefully some of that got in there, you know, right through the cracks in your skull. And I'm just going to keep hammering away on it until you get it. And, uh, yeah, that's it for this episode, guys. And, uh, again, shout out to my family if you're listening. You guys are awesome. I love you all. And we'll see you in the summertime. And for the rest of you, we'll see you next week. Cheers.